I, but I've seen like, these crazy prices uh, for. Oh no! I mean, yeah, no dildos can get super expensive, but I'm like only under two dollars to have some alien eggs. Reasons put up why in you. I haven't bought it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like shouldn't they be paying me if shoes. I'm gonna harbor their young? Like <laughs> exactly, exactly. Should Fine. I start now? We love it too. Uh, Hello. Yes, right oh, well, now. I'll do mine. Okay. Do hey, do one of your really great intros again. Okay. Now that the now there's pressure, okay. <laughs> you got this. I believe okay. in you. Okay. Hello. Welcome back to Other Words for Whore. I am your host, Mila. And if you've never been here before, this is a podcast for sex workers, by sex workers, and also all things sexual and entertaining, whether it be for money or for pleasure. So today we are talking to a um, not ethically non-monogamous couple. Okay, I, I made that harder for you. <laughs> like I, that's the the. She's like, a okay, I'm a swinger. Yeah, like, yeah. We're, yeah, we're swingers. But but that but term. But that's a politically correct way to say it, though. I feel like. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, the we'll swinger term that. just kind of like, it, it ekes me out a little. I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of past that. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm actually over it. Let's, I'm over that. It's played out. <laughs> Let's fucking get to the bottom day, of it. Yeah. What, swingers? Or? Like, I mean, calling, like, if I had to call myself that, I wouldn't like it either. Well, it, I mean, it just makes me think of, like, key parties and, you yeah. know, weird shit. Yeah. That, that just reminds me, is that, wasn't that just what they did in the 70s? But yeah. like, essentially, they, they were swinging, though. Yeah. Right? So it's like, you know what? Okay, here's a fun fact. Um, If you ever watch um, Jim Carrey's Grinch Who Stole Christmas, there is a part in there where, like, Baby Grinch, it's like a flashback. And Baby Grinch is like, oh, so sad. He's being separated from the party. And you look at the party and they're like collecting keys in a fishbowl. Oh, really? I'm like, oh, damn. Some little (laughs) freaky shit. They got to plant some freaky shit. That's yep. fucking hilarious. Of course. Somebody, somebody. So even in your Christmas wholesome Jim Carrey Grinch movie, it's in there. <laughs> and they're getting down and dirty. So, okay. So, but so for like the modern swinger, key parties is like not a thing. Er. Nah. Are you just like, that's just dumb movies. I've never been invited to, or I mean, that. it sounds crazy anyways. <clears throat> I mean, to lose my keys. Well, the key party premise is like you throw them in, and whoever's you you fish out yeah, is who you got to no go and fuck. <laughs> but also, that seems extremely like wow, <clears throat> not not good to today's standards. I think we need to have some consent here. Yeah, but no, I, I mean, there's your there's the, the consent the, the part. It might be the consent, though, and itself. I think there maybe was a time when it was like, hey, that was like a level of kink or something that could be done. That Ooh, was like you know, true. like. I mean, it was just, it was something for that time. But I think yeah. in this day and age, it's, I mean, we have, we have platforms where we can find each other and we can have it, these parties yeah, we have and we the get internet. together and we have hotel rooms and shit and we, yeah. <laughs> and we can, we can do what we want to do. Um, and it, and it's not nearly as difficult as maybe it once was. So. Yeah. Difficult and weird. Um, <clears throat> do, yeah. Cause like I always heard when I was little, like, but they put the green lights outside. I know. Like, oh, <laughs> that's how you know. <laughs> Or, well, I'll, but there is some truth to some, like the upside down pineapple thing. I was, like, yeah, pineapple. Oh right. God, I think we all kind of okay. embrace that a little bit. That's what I've seen all over yeah. hedon, hedonism, um, in Jamaica. That's all I ever see is the upside down pineapples and cute little people dressed up like unicorns. Yep, I've got, I have a bikini with upside down pineapples, and I'm like, no, it's not a factory defect. Like, no, this is on. I chose this shit. Yeah. Okay, so when they is have the... to be upside down pineapples. Though, yeah. That, oh, well, that's that. that's that's the that's the lifestyle that's like thing. The that's universal. The thing. Yeah. I see. Upside down pineapple. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just like, aloha. Here's my right. pineapple. Right. Welcome. Just everybody. Right. With you know, pineapple. everybody oh, yeah. loves a pineapple. People have like a tattooed. On them. Uh, yeah, I haven't gone that route, but I do have a doormat outside of our, um, like. And it's know, an upside house. down pineapple? Yeah, it I says welcome, it. but the O and, or the E and welcome, or no, it's the O and welcome. I don't know. Something in there has a pineapple instead of the letter. I don't forget mm. what it is. <laughs> you should know, too, for anyone who's watching at home, um, the guest is not on camera. So this isn't a mistake. I'm not forgetting or whatever, just to let everyone know. It's just for identity. Stuff. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm it's like this disembodied identity. voice. But she does have nice, like she has a good full bosom. <laughs> and, um, I do. Yeah. Do you mind if I sexually harass you? <laughs> no, okay, yeah. you know what? Have at it. Okay, yeah. Sexually I mean, kind of the whole thing is, is good. It's ready to go. So Damn, I think you guys thanks. would like it. Yeah. Well, okay. So how long have you been in the swinging lifestyle then? Uh, about seven years now. Oh, and so you you and your husband started? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, we've been together, 
we've been together since we were very young. I was, um, we were teenagers. I was 19 when I got pregnant with our first child and we're one of those weird couples that just like made it work. Right. Yeah. So like we've stayed together all this time and we were always very, I don't know, explorative, had fantasies, ideas. We we're both very sexual, um, but didn't really know of a, like a platform for it or have like an outlet for some of these things. So, yeah. I mean, we did right. our shit, you know, we got into some trouble here and there, but mm -hmm. it wasn't until later in life when a friend actually like introduced us to this and said, Hey, you know, there are other people out there doing this and you can actually find them and there are parties and things and like, you right. meet people. You're like, Oh, um, we don't have to like, just like stumble. It's like, Oh my God, I'm finding something. my people. Yeah. <laughs> like, Cause had you guys already been experiencing with like threesomes and like orgies and shit or not no, until swinging? No, that started. was really more towards swinging. The like the, yeah. I mean, there was some, you know, flirtations with things, but we never like, you know, flirtations with a threesome thing or like, yeah. you know, kissing or whatever, but we just, we never really fully executed it. Yeah. And I, I think, I don't know, there's that kind of line too. like for us, like we were never looking to, um, to cheat or to do something, you know, and it's you so hard when like you're, yeah. And I, I mean, I'll say like thing. when you're within the lifestyle boundaries, the people that you meet and, and the experiences you have, like so often, so much as it's just so open and talked about. Yeah. Whereas like, if you just meet somebody at the bar, you don't know what they're about, you know? And no, I mean, you can have fun for a night, right? Cheating. But yeah, I mean, and whatever, I mean, that's, it's on them, but like you right, can have right. fun for a night, but it's not, it wasn't necessarily what we were looking for. We wanted to, I always joke, like our, our favorite thing is to like make really great friends that we have a great time with and we can like do really fun stuff with and just like fuck each other's brains out. You Ooh. Know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's who, who started the conversation. Sorry to cut you off. Kayla. No, you're fine. I'm literally just like, who, this because that's, anyway. th this is one thing that I'll say coming. So I'm divorced a couple of years ago now. And whenever people talk about this stuff, especially the swingers that I've known, they're always like, well, let's just talk like, Talk to your wife about it, whatever, or, you know, like whatever. And I'd be like, you have no easy. idea how much, how yeah. much harder it is than that. You know, like yeah. how did you guys have that first conversation? I mean, I think for us, it was a little easier. Okay. Like I said, we, we, I mean, we played with fantasies and whatnot and, and it wasn't like we walked right into like, we're going to do everything. So the conversation actually kind of found us because my best friend, um, she and her husband stumbled into all this. Oh, so they, really? Yeah. So they actually got into it first. And then, uh, yeah, one drunken St. Patrick's Day in the ladies' room, she spilled her guts. and um, Oh, she was like, we've been swinging. Well, I mean, they were they were trying it out. Like, it was still pretty new yet, but, like, they were, they were doing stuff. And, um, yeah, so I'm like, okay, pause. We need to have a big conversation about this. <laughs> like, I want to know more. <laughs> so Ooh. they kind of found us. And then, yeah, I mean, we just... We talked about it. We checked out like options and whatever. We went to a party with them and I was absolutely terrified. Like that sounds so lame. Like, oh, I was so scared. It wasn't like that. It was just like, it was really intimidating. I'm like, I don't know what to expect. I yeah. don't know what people are going to be like. Um, so it was very intimidating, but everybody was so cool and it was, it was a lot of fun. And we're like, I think this is actually where we're supposed to be. Yeah, like this makes like a so lot of sense. Fun and like live and open and like non-judgmental. But even with that, like, like we didn't, we didn't like go to a party or like learn about it and just dive into doing everything. Yeah. We were around it for a while first. So Cause like, you can just go and just like, Chill and yeah, step you, your toes you can and, like you don't have to like, be like you can go to a meet and greet, you can go to parties, you can, yeah. you know, you can talk to people, whatever. You, and you can pace yourself. Like mm -hmm. it's not like, yeah, you don't I, I want to see what this is about. And that means I have to like, you know, go full Let's swap. It open. Yeah. No. So we, I mean, we kind of played with it. And it, it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm the more outspoken one of the two of us. And I'm usually the one who's like, quicker to take risks or be like, yeah, you know, fuck <laughs> it. Let's, you know, do something crazy. Do I'm the one that ends up backstage. I'm the one that ends up like getting us in trouble, you know? Yeah. But with this, I was like, well, but what if this, or what if that, or what if this, you know? And I think it was just being oh, right. like it's being together so for so long crazy. and like not being, I, I hadn't even really like, like not being naked and sexual with someone like that, you know, other than like my else. husband, 
you know, for so long, it was like, wow, that's just, I, I felt very self-conscious about my body. So you hadn't been with anybody by your husband since you were 19? Yeah. But yeah, that's crazy. I'm so glad yeah. you're swingers now. Me too. Because I, because we I made up like, for a lot of time. It's like so sweet, but at the same time, like, no. And we saying, were never those people. Like we were never the people that. that were like, oh, we're so sweet. Like we were, we were bad kids, you know, yeah, we were yeah. in high school, you know, tearing it up. But yeah. Um, so for us, it was like, I don't know. I think, you know, society says this is how you're supposed to be. And we think, yeah. you know, monogamy, whatever. And it wasn't that we, we felt that way or that we were tied to that. It was just like, that just was what it was, you know? So when we saw an alternative, it's like, Hey, I literally this actually say, like, feels like more authentic to us. Monogamy doesn't work for most people, no. including monogamous people. Absolutely. Like, mostly monogamous people is who it doesn't work for. And ever. 70% <laughs> of, of like divorce or of, Marriages are actually pretty much doomed when you look at it from 50% yeah. divorced. And then like how many of those are just miserable, but staying together for the kids and shit. And then we learned last which time that crazy. swinger divorce rate was what? Like 2%. Like two, yeah, it's way lower. Which I did not believe. And I stayed here for an hour looking shit up afterward. I mean, and, and the statistics true. are probably even like skewed because like not maybe not that many people are out as swingers. But so I bet maybe it's even like less percent. It, it's insane, but it I is think, true. Like you know, two to I, five percent. But. If I had to like, you know, throw my dart at that, I would say, yeah, of course, like, you know, having some variety and non-monogamy, you know, works better for some people. I think it's even bigger than that, though. I think the 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 reason why you would see that is because in order to stay married and be successful doing this sort of thing, mm -hmm. the level of communication, self-reflection, um, emotional intelligence that you have to have, you know, to navigate all these things, it's, it's just next level. And a lot of couples, I think people get married and they, you know, they just, they're just doing life and yeah. they, you know, you give up on emotions. shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, you think about how many times you hear, you know, Sounds like depressing. sexless marriage or whatever. And, I, you know, it's crazy. Yes. Were you surprised? It's mind boggling to me. Mila, yeah. So, oh. I guarantee you the sexist marriage is on, is one sided. So, well, and, and I know these men is out here getting pussy. Oh, you think everyone, you always think guys are cheating, but they yeah. Are. They, well, <laughs> they from are. Well, from your fucking <laughs> like pers perspective, I can see why you have every guy in your day job, like fucking even. Yeah. But even guys who like, aren't, aren't there. Yeah. Well, Even you though. know, and if you've got the housewife who's, you know, reading her Fifty Shades and like yeah. fantasizing, like maybe maybe she's not out physically cheating, but she's definitely fantasizing. wanting well, something I she's not getting say, and emotionally cheating. Yeah, I, mean, I always say, um, I hope your wife is getting fucked right now. Right. As you're literally asking me to like go fuck you at her your hotel or be your sex and shit, which is like, go crazy. I'll take the money. But like at the same time, like, but like, just, you know. Hope your wife's getting. I hope like, she's getting choked it. by a dude yep. right now. I hope she is choking on. And the like half right the time now. they'll be like, "Well, I guess." Like, <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, go, yeah, go do something. Grow the fuck up, dude." Like, if there's gotta be, a, if you're in a, if you're in a sexless marriage, like it's gotta be. Like, I know your wife's not sitting there like, "I, I, I hate sex so much." Like, and even if she does, I'm sure there's really like there's some rooted trauma there that like maybe you could help your wife like fucking. Fix. Yeah. Well, and even that, you think about what what gets you in a position where you have a sexless marriage. Who gets yeah. married and says, "I want to have no sex ever for right. the rest of our marriage"? You and know? they always say That's they were you like do. fucking like rabbits in the yes. first in the beginning. But I'm like, that communication stops. Right. That like. Well, willingness like, to be vulnerable together or to like explore or yeah you know get like through the, hard shit and i know the wife always takes on like the mother role and then like something that, i know that like this one guy was saying like something like changes in their heads once like the yes. the hot wife becomes the mother mm. and now she's no longer sexual she's the mother of your child i think that was me and it's like fuck you dude she wants Shut some me. dick or pussy. She wants something. She wants something. She wants to and, come. I know that. And yeah, I don't care if she's, you know, nine months pregnant and her belly's sticking out. She still wants some dick yeah. or something. Like she's still, you know, like. I've heard crazy things about pregnant pussy. We are. Oh, well, even more so horny. when you're pregnant because you've got like blood flow on board right. and sensation. Yeah, you're so horny too. Yes. Because I'm always super horny. Like when I'm on my period or when I'm ovulating, I'm like, give me a penis. Yeah. So. so I think it has far less to do with the actual sex and more to do with like fucked up communication styles yeah. or poor. Which like leads to, to that. relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then you get down that road and. 
Yeah. So I think when you see success yeah. in people who are, you know, more like towards the lifestyle or doing it's, alternative, yeah, it's you know, sexual relationships, having... it's not just the sex. Right. It's like all the shit you have to be upfront about, upfront about that and aware about. Up to that. Yes. Right. And like the communication that you have to have in order to to have that work for you. Right. Because like, OK, are you guys supposed to swap now? Yes. OK, so. When you thought about, like, seeing, like, your husband, like, be with another woman Mm -hmm. or, like, him see you be with another man, like, what was your guys' like, first, like, conversation surrounding that like? Like, what, was it just like, yeah, like, it's going to turn me on? Or were you like, am I going to feel jealous? Or, like, what did you think? I mean, it went both ways, honestly. Like, there were times where it was, like, the idea of, like, seeing him just nail some chick. like That sounds so hot. That was super hot to me. Um... But then also, you know, there's that feeling of like, oh, but what if what if that changes things between us? Right. You know, yeah. like that fear is in there and, and that fear is, you know, and then the jealousy part, too. It's like, oh, yeah. you know, oh, am I going to feel jealous? I was afraid of feeling jealous. And and you know what? The thing is, I've, I've found after being in this for seven years, mm-hmm. like, you know what? There are times you're going to get jealous. Yeah. There's times you're going like to feel. Human nature and you have to like work yes. with that, right? And, and, the, and, it's, and it's less about feeling jealous or feeling fear and more about like, how can I pull on that and like figure out where is that coming from? Why do I feel like that? Yeah. So you can Ooh. like grow, be better. And mm-hmm. then you can kind of own that shit and like yeah. next level. Like, it's right. like, yeah, level and up. Even, like, hotter. <laughs> Yes. Can you can you share like an example of so because you've been doing it seven years? Yeah. What is something that would make you uh, or like what's the last thing that made you insecure? Is is there a specific thing that happens or like just how the woman looks or whatever? Mm. I mean, I don't know about the last thing, but like, like as I was thinking, because now I'm like thinking way back in time, you know? Yeah. Um, because we've been full swap. Like once. Like we were around it, and then like once we went in, I was like, "I'm gonna tear off this band aid." We just went full swap. <laughs> like, yeah, I want to do all the things, you know. And I, I knew I liked women, but I was like, I don't want to say I'm by until I've like done the stuff. Oh. So, like until I execute, I didn't feel, you know. So it's like once I did, I'm like, okay, check that off. Oh, I didn't even know that you I, <laughs> buy at I all. Buy, yeah. Oh, okay. So you like, so how did you break? How did you even? Did you just like one day like go down on one of the girls and you were like, oh, this is cool. I've always. Or you're like, I, oh, I like. I've this. always been into women, but I think, you know, growing up, it's like, oh, what are you like? What's OK or not? Like, I'd steal my dad's Playboys and be looking at shit. Oh, and, my you know, God. I, yeah. Dude. <laughs> like very appreciatively, you know, I'm like, oh, my God. That dude, is how so- I um, that's how I discovered. um that's how I discovered porn. It's like it would be in like random DVD cases behind the actual DVD. Oh, yeah. Deeply hidden. There was like bootylicious <laughs> level three or some shit. And I remember I would put him in his DVD player and I'd watch him and I'd be like, oh my goodness. Like crazy. And so, I'm pretty sure yeah. I had like my first orgasm when I was like 12 years old. And I was like, what the fuck was that? I want to do that again. Yeah, oh, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Where's that? Where's that teddy bear? Yeah, <laughs> Give yeah, me that blanket. Yeah. <laughs> the oh. special blanket. No, not my bar- my Barney, my <laughs> not my poor poor Barney stuffed animal who never deserved to be my boyfriend or be humped. But yeah, so so yeah, I, I, there was that. Um, but you know, thinking back to being you know going full and doing all those things, yeah. I'm thinking about like you know early on some of the jealousies and like when we first opened up to being separate, I think that was an even bigger or more telling thing. Like there was all the fear beforehand with like going full swap, but that, that was, what do you mean? Separate playing like, separately, separate like, Oh, not even separate rooms. Like, like we, you we will like... go out with people separately oh, I on love dates that. and like go to oh, a hotel or do whatever. Yeah. We, we play separately. So what happens when you play separately, but then like, what if somebody like catches feelings? Like, is that a thing? It's a, I mean, or obviously it's, we're a, human. it's a thing. Yeah, yeah. I would think. Cause I, cause I know that, um, like with my ex, like we would definitely like, we had like plenty threesomes and stuff with women. Um, but, and I know, and it was just like super hot to me, but it would totally like, I, it would definitely hurt my feelings if he was like, oh, I'm actually in love with her now. I'd be like, what? Or even just to come out laughing really hard, like with the, I don't know, like to see that energy between them could make you insecure. I can see. I would literally be 
like, uh, like, yeah, I guess it's so interesting, especially because, yeah, there's like that level of jealousy is like where that's probably coming from, too. So, so. I mean, I'll, I'll hit the jealousy first. So like what I, where I was kind of going with it was um, the first time that we sort of said, hey, I think we kind of need to explore playing separate. He um, we, we met Ooh. a couple. We met a couple and he and the female super clicked. And she was like, we, we were still friends. She she is not was she is. Yeah. She's Asian. She is like Lucy Liu, kind of just super hot, I'm tight listening. little. Oh my gosh, dude. I, she I'm is like, gorgeous I and she's smart and she's fun and she's like all the things, you know, big long lashes. Like, yeah, she's oh, all I the would things. Be like, okay, we're both falling in love with her. Right. Actually. Yeah. But like we, we met them as like as couples. Mm-hmm. Um, but like her husband was not, he was more into watching her. Like that was his his thing that oh, was yeah. his kink. okay he wanted to watch her that sounds like so it was like well you know it's we, like we oh. met and we had the situation but i'm like it's very apparent like we were i'm super great people right. still friends like great yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but, but it was like real apparent like me. like the vibe here is you know it's in this scenario i am not the you know the center it's it's those two you know and we hadn't really experienced that before so um that was something where i was i was jealous a, because, you know, there's that little bit of FOMO where it's like, oh, he's having this, like, this thing, but I, I'm not, you know, or, like, I'm missing out on something. But then oh, there was, yeah. you know, like, like he's having something that I'm not having, you know, because he was separate with somebody first, you know, and I, I hadn't done that yet. Yeah. Um, we agreed to it, you know, but there's still that little bit of, like, okay, that's why I'm, that's the ick I'm feeling. Yep, it's like, because I'm yeah, jealous because he is doing something on his own and I'm not. And I got to, okay, got to let that go, girl. Um, but then also because so, she wait, is so, a fucking knockout and I'm like, oh, ah! <laughs> wait, so I don't get it. So you were staying in the room with, with, her, with her man, not doing anything. No. Well, no. So we or started, we rough? started out all doing stuff. Right. Oh, okay. Like we're all, we're all. When people move into. Yeah. Lives. We're all together, but it was real apparent that, and, and we talked so much about it, that that was his thing. His thing was like, watching her and be and i'm somebody who like when i'm with somebody i want to be with like i want you to be like like focused on me right right. so if we're doing something and you're like constantly looking over and looking over it's very distracting to me oh i see and i feel like "Eh, this isn't really doing it for me you're like am i a fucking flashlight right now yes i that is not me i'm not uh, yeah i'm not your toy yeah Um, you're saying he was looking at at his he, wife. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Which yeah. totally cool. Like, I get it. And, like, yeah. we talked about that being kind of his thing. Um, but, you know, for sense. me, I was like, you know, this isn't really working for me. And, you know, he was, of course, having a great time with it. So we thought, you know, maybe this is maybe this is something we need to do. We got to explore doing some things separately. So, yeah, yeah, initial jealousy there was, like, A, because he was doing something I wasn't. And then yeah, B, totally that. that she's, like, this fucking knockout and something I can't be, right? Like, she is, I'm, I'm, like, blonde hair, blue eyes, white, you know? And she's, like, this beautiful, tiny little, you know, gorgeous Asian girl. And I'm woman, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, they... <laughs> so, you know, like, in your head, you kind of go through all the little yes, scenarios. Comparison. Of, yeah. The stealer of joy. Yes. How did you... So, how, I think, I feel how like a did poet you... said that, I think. What's that? A poet said that? A yes. comparison is the stealer, stealer of, joy. of joy. Either a poet said it, it or my friend said it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you said it. I think it was Maybe you. he's a poet. No, Didn't you're know a it. poet. I am is, a fucking poet. Is there... So how did you punish him for that? Um, you give him the silent treatment all week or like, what did you do as a mm. wife? And I'm kind of joking. That, yeah, I'm not yeah. a punisher. No, I know. Um, How did no. you deal with it, though? I mean, <laughs> it's boring as fuck to talk about. But like we we literally we we go on walks and talk and like talk it to death. Like, yeah. OK, talk it into the ground. Like Just, and, and, and that's what it takes is like being open and talking about it and honest. Like you have to be willing to be honest, even if it sucks and you don't want to say it or the other person doesn't want to hear it. Just being honest. And mm-hmm. and then I think there also has to be an onus a as a person. Like, I can't go into that and be like, I'm going to be right and I am going to make my point and, you know, whatever. Because in the scenario, it's like, I said we could do this and it's okay. Right, right, right. And now I'm having feelings that kind of ick me a bit out, you know, and it's and I understand it's jealousy and, and fear. So I, I can't just go back and be like, I'm mad at you because I feel these things. Yeah. You know, that's fucked up. So it's like, I'm feeling these things. How do we, how do we kind of pull through that? You know? And so it's a lot of like 
Okay, well, slow, slow our roll. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. Did you? What did you need? Just some like reassurance and slow down. Sometimes some reassurance. reassurance is like definitely my like. I'm like, dude, just. And then I think Tell like me. with them in particular, yeah, it was us. great to like, yeah. we spent time together as friends yeah. and like that I, she and I could like talk a bit and text yeah. yet. So it was like, no, this is really, this is really about an experience with friends. Like it is when we're together. It's just, I don't know. I've heard people say before, like, you know, when people get into the lifestyle, they're always about like, oh, I, we want a unicorn. Like, and it's always a couple looking for another woman. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the easy out because like, you know, bringing a woman in is less, um, intimidating, threatening. less threatening, you know? Um, yeah, but, but the, the real unicorn really is like finding a four way connection. That's the yeah. harder thing. So, you know, kind of understanding that, Hey, this isn't, I- I'm looking at it wrong. This is actually an opportunity. Like he's getting to explore something sexually. That's making him really happy. Mm-hmm. He's happy when he's with me. I'm not losing him. Right, you right. know, and and I also have this opportunity. So maybe I need to think about what do I want that I haven't, you know, experienced. Ooh, and, yeah. um, and, and I did, you know, I actually set up my own profile for a while where I was a single female on the profile. And that's, I mean, I was very open about being married, but, right, right, right. um, you know, corn for a couple for quite some time where they, they loved awesome. like getting a, you know, hotel suite and having me stay the night and just doing Hell it up yeah. and. Yeah. How, all the things. I love it. Yeah. I know. This shit is so like exciting all the time for me for some reason. I can talk about this shit all day. I it, know. You're, it's so cute <laughs> when you're fascinated by stuff. Yeah. I'm a fucking horn dog. <laughs> is this, well, and I've had a, a so serious cute. like this event we went to, which we should like, we'll have to set that up eventually. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm just praying. But I like doing the backstory too. So is there, how did this change you? Like getting into the lifestyle? How, how did your marriage look before compared to now? Is there any big positive or negative difference? I mean, I I think we've, I mean, we've always, we've always been best friends. We've always been really close. I think the biggest change is just that I think we are, as we've now gotten older and, and been doing this a while, I feel like we are, we are so much better off and so much more authentic in our relationship than maybe we would have been. And I I base that on the people we know and relationships we watch around us that are, you know, more in the traditional monogamous lifestyle. I feel like the things we talk about, there isn't that like, I, I think because of this, I'm like, when I have those conversations and people are at work and they're like, you know, oh, he doesn't know, he never does this or that, or like, oh, I, you know, I don't suck dick. That's gross. And I'm like, Jesus what fucking the fuck? Christ. And that's why your husband you. I was with someone sucks like right that. now. Yeah. By my yeah. friend. So like yeah. but you hear the shit and it's like these are this is the product of years and years of bad communication. Yeah. It's the product of right. you know yeah. not expressing your own needs so that you can have them fulfilled and then being bitter and you know taking away someone else's. And, and yeah, somebody said somebody said something like just because you're in a monogamous relationship doesn't mean you get the like the right to like basically like like maritally castrate somebody. Like right. like okay, I I understand if you don't like giving head, then okay, but like how about can I go get some can I get some help? Yeah. yeah. You don't like, like doing that? Like, you because know? I don't think that's fair for me. Now I have to live a whole, uh, like a whole, whole life, life or, or the rest of this relationship without getting head. What, just because you don't like doing it? Like, I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. But I think that's true on like all you know? of the levels you think about yeah. any kind of kink a person has. I mean, how many people are, like you go on FET and like how many people are on there? outside of their marriage, right? Exactly. you know, because, because it's something they can't share, can't talk about. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, when you, you look at like the differences that we have in our relationship, I mean, we haven't known another way we've been together. We've explored, we mm-hmm. kind of, it's been a gradual, you know, yeah. to here we are. But with that, I think we would have been in a much different place. I look at that, that, that shit around me and I'm yeah. like, you know what, we, we've talked about like, what gets you off? What are you curious about? Oh, yeah, good what haven't you done that maybe you want to do, you know? And, um, and then how do you feel about me saying that? Like what, you know, what could we, what Ooh. could we do to make that happen? Or is yeah. that completely like out of bounds? Is that something that right. was, is just too uncomfortable and why, you Cause, know? Cause some people are so like, people are so afraid to talk to their partners about stuff with yeah. so then like they never even try and it's like you know just like the old saying like closed mouths don't get fed like me i mean i feel like as long as you go about it in like a respectful manner just like you know ask and like see then i mean all the big clappy hands you know yeah <laughs> communication goes a long way i mean 
And I looked up, like, what is good questions to ask? And, like, some of them are, like, just like you said, like, name a kink you're curious about but not sure if you would try. Or have you ever had a I wish I didn't do that sexual encounter? Or have you ever had a one-night fling with a stranger you met in a public place? <laughs> now, I don't even know what these are from, but these are all But even, like, questions. you think but about, the like, the, like, the tests you thinking. can take online to see, like, what kind of things I'm you're curious. into for kink or, you well, know, the there's... The feels yes, the fe- Yeah, the different fet tests. Yeah. So, like, those are things, like, you can do that together and talk about right. it. And, you know, talking about, like, how do you bring up that conversation yeah. to try the lifestyle? Well, maybe it's not bringing up the conversation for the lifestyle so much as it is, like, start start within your own relationship. Yeah. And, like, maybe play with what, one of those fun Yeah, kind of games. play with, like, with what, you know, what do we like and what have we not talked about? And, like, what do we fantasize about? Yeah. And just, like, knowing that really everything is on the table if you just do it the right way yeah. you know like you gotta you gotta be respectful you gotta it's gotta be consensual you yeah gotta, you know but, but to know that like we can put that on the table it doesn't mean we're gonna execute it but like no but like let's say anything like, can be put on communication on it. yes let's like open let's talk about it streams let's not treat our you know our significant others like roommates otherwise yeah. i mean if this is somebody you love then do you not want them to like experience pleasure in all ways? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and there's, yeah, there's a term that you'll hear like in both, you know, in the lifestyle and polyamory, but compersion. So, oh my gosh, oh, I've, I've heard, heard this, that, but I don't know what it means. Yeah. So it's, it, it's basically like when you can, when you can feel joy and happiness oh, based my on seeing your, me your yeah, seeing your partner have that joy and happiness. So like right, yep. that I could look Feeling over joy from seeing your partner. Yes. Joy. If I can look at my right. partner, I look oh. at my husband and I see him just pounding a girl mm-hmm. and they're both like in the throes and having a great time. And I see him just like living like, his best life like, there right that there. I can be like, you know what? I'm oh, yeah. so, I feel really good for you right now. I feel so happy because I know you're super happy. You you're know? like, I'm married to that. Yes. He's- Yes. Did you fantasize about that before you guys were ever in the lifestyle? Like, I mean, did you like the idea of him fucking some other woman then? Or did you have to see it and then kind of it kicked in? No, I mean, it was more, I think the fantasy was more like if it was both of us with somebody else, whether it was another female or a male, you know, and having them both like with yeah. me. But like the idea was more like just like bringing somebody else into the mix was Seeing kind of the hot factor. Yeah, because it sounds like you guys like dipped your toes in and then like yeah. slowly walked in. And now you guys are like deep, deep diving. Yeah, I think I think we always had the potential. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it was always there, but it was like once we saw, hey, this is where your people are. Mm-hmm. Here's how you find Those them. You know? Yeah. Were you know? one of you more has like more like into it than the other one or anything like that? Um, I don't know about more into it, but I think I was initially the one that was oh. more hesitant. Oh, blow that fire out. Yeah, blow it out again. I went the other way. Go ahead. There we go. There you go. Good. Oh, that was, that's a good profile. No, you look good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, um, yeah. So I, it wasn't that either one of us was like more into it or less into it. It was more like I was the more like I felt like I felt like he was the kid in the candy store, and I was like, "Well, hold on a second. We got to see how much money we have, boy." And I'm like, not no, not that yeah. sounds that sounds really extreme, but like, <laughs> boy. <laughs> No, no. I mean, I think no, we were both though. super excited and we were both super into it. And it was yeah. more like, I think I was so worried about like the things that you think you're supposed to be worried about. And, and looking back now, it's like, I think a lot of it, a lot of it kind of went back to my own fears right. more so than like real problems or issues. It was yeah. just like, I was afraid that this, that, or the other, but You know, and I think that's like when we talk about all of this, like bringing up whatever, how you talk about it or where it comes from or how you succeed, it all comes back down to it's not just communication. It's it's communication and it's being willing to be vulnerable enough to like let the things out that maybe you are not super comfortable letting out Mm -hmm, yeah, and being okay with that person, not being okay with it, you know? Yeah. Like, and and you not being okay with, with what your partner wants. Like you, you have to be like everything. You have to lean into that discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be willing to lean into the discomfort and just be like, you know what? It it doesn't mean we have to do something. It doesn't mean, you know, but, but you're never going to get through it. Unless you talk it through it. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. then, like you said, it just leads to years and years and years of, like, 
resentment and mm-hmm. until like, no one's getting any head and right you know. <laughs> now now you and you're all you know saggy and wrinkly and nobody's having orgasms he does he does not wah, wah. Can, <laughs> can i share some of my perspectives mm-hmm. and then see what you see what you think about it i guess <laughs> or whatever from this okay, so I, I, first, i'm here for you guys so. with all <laughs> these swinger things i what blew me away from the first time I went to one of these events was that I've never seen couples who are more in each other's corner, like to where I didn't even believe them when they'd say, when I'd say, you know, watching your husband fuck a woman who's younger, possibly more attractive or whatever, and that you don't get insecure at all or it doesn't bother you. And, and they'd say, oh, you know, I'm just happy that he's happy what you're saying. Yeah. And I used to not be able to even fucking believe it. It's and real. I'm, yeah. <laughs> and I'm starting to actually get it from coming to these events. So I think that anyone who's even open to exploring it, you know, I, like, you know, really I'm, should. you know, I'm in my late forties had, I had a regular partner for years who's, you know, he's not even 30 yet, but, <laughs> um, hey. it, it, you know, old soul, I guess, Little I don't know, but like it, but it was, I mean, cock. that was fucking fun. Like, you know, right. a, as a woman, my age, I'm like so having somebody who has that stamina and drive. It was like, that was hot. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, he was totally on board and he's right there with me. Like, and yeah. you know, and, and he actually got to have fun, you know, with that wife as well, who was, you Fuck know, so it's yeah. like, Ooh, yeah. And we, this. we did things separate together, whatever, but like, it, but I think there's something to that, like being able to, when, when you're able to do the things that like really get you hot and make mm-hmm. you happy and you've talked that through and like you have that level of understanding that's where you can start to have that compersion because yeah. now you understand each other at that level. So it's, it's not just like, Hey, let's just throw caution to the wind and go fuck other people. Right. You know, but like if you're trying things and you're really talking it through and you're comfortable, it's, it's like, Hey, we're going to take a step to try to enrich our life, you know, our lifestyles, our, our, you know, sexuality, um, and if we're supporting each other, then then we have the opportunity to grow from it and to like feel new and amazing things that you would never otherwise encounter, you know, in a monogamous, you know, typical societal lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Fucking... I. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mila. No, I was just gonna. I just love all you guys. I know. I mean, <laughs> so, so, so good. I'm like, it, my my smiles. I think that every. Uh, at least like so for me for someone who's very interested in it but not sure like I knew I could fuck other chicks but it, but it's always about can I handle you know when it goes the other way right sure and it's all about you you should worry about like how many can I can I handle because you think you can have all the chicks but you know what when, when is it one chick too many I don't know <laughs> oh yeah no and I'm I'm actually very into like the women I, I, whatever I get like fixations kind of shit like I like that you know, like I like to get into more like individual people anyway. Mm. But um, yes. what I was going to say is, it is, do you think it's accurate to say that when you allow each other to be open and free, that it does actually bring you guys together rather than push you apart or make it more tenuous that it does bring you together? Cause you're, I don't know. It, as long, I mean, I would say yes, but there's so many caveats to that, right? Okay. Because every relationship is different. So of course, yeah. If you if you really love each other, you and you really want to see each other happy, and you're willing to have those difficult conversations, and you're willing to examine why you feel jealousy, you know why something bothers you, and talk it through together, Mm -hmm. and 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 if you're willing to respect boundaries and maybe take a step back and hold on something until you can work through it, um. Then, then, I mean, then you're golden, like opportunities are endless. Like, and we, and we've changed so much over the years and like what we're okay with or what we do. Yeah. You think when you go into something like this, it's like, you know, we're going to be all like, oh, here's our boundaries. Here's our, you know, these are the things and we're, mm-hmm. we're same room, same bed, you know, all the stuff. Yeah. And I don't know, as time goes on, it's like, okay, this is dumb. Like we're not getting what we really want out of it. And as we started to open up more, we started to trust more. Yeah. You start to feel deeper for each other as we're doing this and talking through things. And sometimes things don't work like you want them to. Sometimes yeah. you, you, you walk away from something. You're like, okay, you had a great time, but I kind of feel shit. Can we talk about that? Like, yeah. I don't like that. I want to do that again. The level of maturity. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Like the emotional maturity for everyone. Emotional there intelligence. Was, uh, yeah. yeah you know, for real. Was off the charts. I felt like. Yeah. What, Cause I feel like a lot of people don't do not have that. Yes. Like on both, totally on all the agree. gender spectrum. Yes. All of it. 
Do, do you feel yeah. like what is an a what are examples, if you're comfortable talking about it, of course, sure. of like the nights that have been difficult? Like, you know, has there ever been where you go like, I don't want you to have sex with that woman again. There's just something that I don't. Uh, you know no, actually, I mean? like the one I think of right off the top of my head is one where it wasn't even it wasn't her. Like, she was fine. It was just I wasn't I don't know. He just rubbed me the wrong way. Not like literally, but <laughs> <laughs> the guy. Your, your husband or the guy? No, the, the guy. guy. Okay. So, like, we'd been talking and, like, I don't know. He just, you know, he kind of came off as a little entitled or, like. Ew. I don't know. Like, something just wasn't <laughs> hitting right. And then yeah, when and then we, we went to meet, like, it didn't, I don't know. He didn't, he didn't show up when he was supposed to. And he had, like, some work stuff going on, which was fine. But, like, why did you ask us out here? And. I don't know. And it was like yeah, rushed what? and separate room and whatever. And I'm just like, this, this all feels just so off. And she was so sweet and so wonderful. And they had a great time, but I was like, I never want to have sex with him again. I felt like I was just, yeah, really like here for him to do what he wanted to do. And <clears throat> yeah, he was attractive. Yeah. He, you know, it was, it, otherwise it was fine. It was just, uh, I don't, I don't just want, terrible. I mean, anybody can, you know, Stick it in Stick me. It in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Around, yeah. It's like, I, I, I need, need more than that. I need out. some kind of a connection. Yeah, you know, I don't yeah. want to sure. just, it's not just fucking, you mm-hmm. know, it's gotta, there's gotta be some kind of, you know, more than just the, the physical attraction and the, the first sight. There's gotta be some kind of like, you know, I like you in some way as a human, you know, like I'm yeah. not, I'm not yes. just about like, yeah. yeah I think not, with yeah, age, that's just... everything or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. For me, like, I like to connect to people. I don't know. There has to be something there in the brain, I guess. Yeah, no, it's I way better. I think straight, it's, yeah. I think more, I think I feel like, you know, once you get out of your 20s and then you're like, oh, people are yeah. interesting. Yeah. I get that. Like, you know, the excitement of just, just like, of do it. You know, the yeah. excitement yeah. of like, oh, you meet somebody super hot and you just do it. And that's yeah. crazy. And and you thought that was so cool. Yeah. And you know what? At the time, it probably was. It was. It was at the you time. Know, then you think back an and you're like, oh, only one person came. And guess who it wasn't? It wasn't <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Not the bitch. <laughs> no. No. So, yeah, I think at this stage of life, it's like, yeah, I yeah. want to have people I connect with and that I enjoy. And Oh, yeah. I want to have fun. I want to, like, you know, go right to a right. concert or, like, go do some shit and have fun and oh, laugh I and then and this then such a good date, go do yeah. all of the all of the things. orgasms so yeah. when did you guys go to hito uh it was about a year and a half ago that was your first time yes oh, first and only my gosh it was awesome did you guys go with like a certain group like or, or a certain theme so it was like i think it was called like swing break or something oh yeah it was like okay April, i know what you're talking like about i know break. i know all the categories <laughs> well in the, but okay, everybody so, says to go during Swing, Spring break, yeah. if you say. So we we'd actually <laughs> we'd been booked. We had plans to go, and it was like April of 2020. So that didn't happen. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that got put oh. off. And then a that year later, nasty. like we were hopeful Probably. that maybe we could go. Like we yeah. we had the insurance like on the trip and the resort. And we oh, thought, thank God. We thought, you know, okay, here we can go now. And then things started to pick up again, and Jamaica was not looking like a good place like it wasn't it wasn't working so we had to put it off again so like we just finally went it was like a year and a half ago so but yet no we had a great time it was so cool and yeah definitely would do it again yeah Um, what was like the like what was the first did you see anything there where you're like so cool or like anything that or were you just like this is dope that people can just like fuck outside i think for me like my favorite thing was just like being naked and swimming in the ocean and like I don't know just being free like that I love yeah. going to like the, the nude side with the pool mm-hmm. and you know and like you know they had the, like the D- DJ for the daytime and yeah. they did like little sexpo demos and stuff and it was fun yes and I loved that like it, it was kind of like Vegas like it doesn't stop right so like the parties go really late mm-hmm. And then, you know, the, like, we go back to the pool, and it's, like, 3 in the morning, and people yeah. are down at the hot tub and pool. And I would always God. be there every night with a speaker. It's yes. so fun. I was hot. literally the DJ. It was the greatest time. So much fun. It, funny, like, we, we go all the way to Jamaica, to Hito, and we end up hooking up with a couple that was, like, from St. Cloud, Minnesota. <laughs> oh, my God. Funny. It's 
Isn't well, that so, so there, yeah, so there was that, but then he, he actually, there was, we were actually down at the pool side at one point and, you know, well into a night, quite inebriated. And <laughs> I'm like deep in a conversation with this like other dude and, and his wife and we're talking and this chick comes up to me and she is like, Hey, excuse me. She's like, is it all right if I have sex with your husband? And I'm like, huh? And I look over and Rich, sorry, but he's like waving, you know, and I'm like, uh, he's waving. yeah, I'm like, that's cool. That's hey, just... over here. Please say yes, honey. Please. He's just like, he's like, hey, he's like, what's yeah. up, ma? Send her over. Has there ever been one Did where he said yes? Just, like, beg you? Oh, I said yeah. yes. And then they okay. went to one of those little, there's the, like the a little side area. In the like, back? Yeah. Funny. I love that. What is your guys' best, like, or even individually, is there ever something that you've given him or vice versa where it's like, God, did we have a great night? Or where you guys walk out high fiving? Or like anywhere, I guess is what I was uh, meaning. But okay. yeah, Hito. Okay, Hito okay. Right okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, keep it to Hito. <laughs> okay, at Hito. So the I think the funnest, because it was kind of unexpected, but um, we had gone down for one of the theme night parties. Yes. And it was like a I see it was like a glow light kind of, you know, neon. neon oh, yeah, one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're, yeah, we were down there and it was fun and stuff. But like, I don't know, we were kind of burnt out. It had been a long day out in the sun, whatever. And we went back to just like chill out for a while in the room. And he was kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of done. And I don't know. I caught my second wind. I'm like, now, fuck that. I want to go down and see what's going on because we it was early in our trip. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to go down there and see. I can hear the music going. I want to go down and see what's going on in the club. And he's like all right, well, I mean, are you cool going by yourself? I'm like, yeah, I am. So like, I put on my little lingerie outfit and I ran down to the club and, and that's where I ended up finding, like, I ended up running into those people. We met them on the bus on the way over. Oh my God. Funny. (laughs) I ended up running into them and we're talking and like, we were just having so much fun and we're like, we ended up in a little back room where there's these, the bartenders were like, you know, I don't know. It was like, there was, there was naughty stuff going on. I didn't know that there were back rooms in that club area. Um, yeah, they had us kind of in a back sealed off area where like everybody else was towards okay. the front. And we were like kind of around the corner in these little like private booth areas. And, okay. Um, yeah. And so like the, then, you know, naughtiness ensued. But but then with that, we were like, okay, you know, we need to we need to get him. We need to get my husband. So um <laughs> our dumb drunk asses were like, we're going back to the room and I'm like, okay, well, we can't just walk in there and, like, jump on him. He's <laughs> sleeping. Are you like, give us your penis? So they're like, well, uh, what if she crawls into bed with him? I'm like, maybe, but, you know, he might also think it's me or he's going to be freaked out. Like, what the hell's going on? I'm like, all right, well, we're just, well, let's play it by ear. Let's just go in. So we go in there and we're trying to be all sneaky. And, of course, we're giggling like a bunch of little <laughs> kids. We're just stupid. And yeah. we're being all sneaky coming up to the room. And and then, of course, it's like, oh, I have to pee. I have to pee. <laughs> Oh my god! Um, but we get into the room and yeah, and she's like, "Okay, I'm gonna go get into his bed," <laughs> and he's like, "What the fuck is going on?" Oh, <laughs> he wakes god. up and we're laughing, and I, he was obviously a good sport about it because he's like, yeah. "Okay, I'm being woke up for some yeah, fun, this is so great. it's all good." He was yeah. a very good sport about it, but oh my gosh, we were, should be a good sport about that, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, right, yeah, right, right, right. But but you know, awesome. like waking up to it, it's like, what is happening? right now you know yes but, yeah. yeah and we were just we were just stupid coming in there like we Wait, thought we were quiet and sneaky but we were probably like you might as well have been like you know a marching band or you just, know <laughs> banging on pots and pans i don't know like, just like talking about that though like hearing about that it's just married you know like traditionally married couples just don't fucking have fun like that in my opinion like i mean i know they have fun there's other things but it's like to me, right. when I see these swinger couples, like it's like it keeps you vital and young, kind of, because your body matters, your sexual, I don't know, everything about it. It seems like it keeps you engaged in the world. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, as you get older, we were talking about this actually today. I'm like, as you get older, like I think the more things you give up on, whether it's your appearance, yeah. your education, your like drive for something, your passion for anything, like the more things you let go, like, the closer to being just dead you are, right? 100%. And then you lose more. Yeah. And like, you lose why? more until you're just a shell of a person. And then, you know. Why? Oh, that's what, that's, I mean, even telling my friend about, like, once we transition to the event that we're going to talk about, just telling my married friends about it, I, I was kind of surprised how many just have, like, this, um, I don't know, like, in the past, they'd be excited to hear all that shit. And it's yeah. almost like it's kind of threatening to them in a sense where they're not 
I don't know. It was just odd to me because you know that they're not having even close to that much fun. Well, and I think it's that it's so threatening is pretty telling. Like it's yeah. telling of like where things are at there. And again, all circles back to like yeah. what you're willing what are you willing to do to have it? Are you yeah. willing to be vulnerable? Are you willing to give? Are you willing to, you know, to, to make like that space yourself. and challenge right. yourself, not just the other person, you know? Yes. If you're willing to do those things and really oh make God, space yeah. for it, you know? But, oh, dude. But if, I, if not, yeah. and you're going to be bitter, well, I mean, it's kind of on you, man, you know? Yeah. Mm-mm. So um, are we ready to talk about Couples Next Door one? We should set it up. If oh, we do, sure. Like, yeah. Tell. Okay. So, so what we're, you know, where we met C and R. Mm-hmm. CNR. CNR. Uh, we yeah, met at the couplesnextdoor.com <laughs> hotel takeover. So I was yeah. producing another show and these people were on Mila or on this show. And yeah, couplesnextdoor.com. Yes. And Mila and I went and it was so fucking fun. It was so fun. And I was like really nervous and like literally I almost like didn't even want to go because I, oh, I, I usually like let my like anxiety and shit like be like, just stay in bed. But I always make myself do shit and I was like pretty happy. Oh, you were a we're fucking, a great time. you were a queen. That, there was a point. So first of all, what this is, it's a hotel takeover. For anyone who's never been or doesn't know, it's, they took over a hotel. I guess, I, I think we can say where, right? Like, is that, yeah. that a problem? So yeah, it, it was a Ramada out in Golden Valley or something like that. Plymouth, with a, yeah. Yeah, Plymouth. And. Oh yeah, there is one in Golden Valley though. That's oh, is there? Okay. Said that. <laughs> but it was like, man, when we got there, we were podcasting, and there was a point when Mila nudged me and like, like to look across, like out the window. Oh remember- yeah, these guys. Well, these guys t- that like this four couples kept trying to get. Well, two couples. So There's four people. They kept trying to get our attention, and he kept like pulling down his pants and like shaking <laughs> Do a his little dick. dance. <laughs> and then I was like, they keep waving at us, and and like the the podcast people noticed that I was like. Um, distracted and pointing and then they everybody turned around and that's when they got like all naked like they started fucking they were fucking on the balcony yeah nice. i mean yeah. it was just like this is the greatest shit in the world it, it was awesome and they and they're pretty hot too um yeah it was actually a paul bunyan in the blue ox blue ox was his his wife like in blue lingerie and little ox ears yep. hot yes. as fuck. um you drug me past really fast, even though she was really like trying to connect. But anyway, well, but, yeah. yeah. Well, they well they said that they they was trying to fuck me, but I was just like walking around. Yeah, but, everyone um, was trying to fuck you, Mila. So that was know. good. Yeah, there there was just one trying to take story it in. my life. There was but one not time. take all of it in. Just take like you know your surroundings in yeah. and not everything in. The, yeah. And the, but the room underneath that uh, the room underneath that balcony was like a dope ass like lit up swinger set room. Yeah, swing sex swing, swing set sex swing. Sex swing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they had like a portable sex swing that looked dope. And basically, this couplesnextdoor.com, they get the entire hotel. So everyone's walking around in costume. They have like, t- I mean, there was yeah. what? There was a pool party, a uh, costume party. There was party. a late night pool party, too. Yeah. Like, there was another pool party. Like, yeah. when we were leaving. It's, it's really typical for that one where there's like a, a pool party during the day. And there's always like, you know, some competitive stuff, some fun, yeah. you know. And um, like, I know we've done them before where there's been like, you know, all the all the the ladies line up and the guys are blindfolded and they have to go through and feel tits and see if they can pick out their partner. Oh, my God. That's well, so funny. That. Yeah, yeah, we saw that. There was something like that. Actually, that happened. Or like, you know, can they, can, like, do they can they pick them out charades? every time? No, <laughs> no. I would feel like I would definitely know my man's dick. It, it goes the other way, too, where like the like the ladies wear the blindfold and the guys like come through and, and you got to like touch just their upper body and see if you can tell which one's yours. But I'm like, I want to touch the whole thing and make sure yeah. <laughs> just you, to make sure if you put you know? the three <laughs> last guys I had sex with. Lined up. I would I would know each penis. I'd be like, that's him, that's him, that's him. Whoop de whoop, schmoop de schmoop. Schmoop de yeah. schmoop, yeah. Well, you know, I <laughs> think you'd be surprised how much guys how much the inside of the pussy like it's like a fingerprint. Oh yeah? Wow. Like, that's I'm another you, that's another interesting that. game to play. 
Oh, the texture, like every bit. Of oh, it. oh, they just go down the line. It's like, I don't. That's that. I mean, that's not something I'm I've not seen. I'm not saying I do. No, 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 no. <laughs> I guess you'd have to put a finger condom on and just take it off. Each I think it's time. your. I think that's your game. Then I can't feel nothing. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No. Mm, yes, you can. No, I'm just saying that that it is. It's amazing how identifying it is. I think, but um, they also say stop wearing Trojans because they cause yeast infections and get dirt and oof. skin. I'm all for not wearing condoms. There was a whole there was a whole thread about it on Twitter the other day and everybody was going crazy. They were like, if he if he uses Trojan and and Magnum, then then he doesn't know about vaginas. So <laughs> had you so heads up. had you ever gone to a swinger party like that before, Mila? Yeah. Okay, you had like this one? Um yeah, it like honestly just reminded it like just that. reminded me of hedonism. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Not tropical. Okay. So that's exact that's why I was like everybody here that hasn't been to Hedo is playing pool. is playing themselves. Is, they should go. Oh yeah. I'm I'm dying. So Hedo, if you guys Hedo is like literally all of that, but like on an in a tropical setting, so all awesome. inclusive, and you can have sex outside of the room. Yeah. That's what's like to me, that's the coolest part is that you don't have to be like in your hotel. No, room. there was literally a point at Hito where we were just having a nice afternoon and we're sitting out by the ocean in those like nice little lounging chairs. And yeah, like the sun is setting. I'm looking out at the ocean and I'm getting eaten out. Yeah. Like this. Is that not this, a postcard? This is postcard. Perfect. I swear to fucking God. Like, that's what I always think when I'm there, too. I'm like, oh, I need to bring like my man. So good. There. Love to have a woman sit on my face next to the ocean. I don't so even care gorgeous. if I couldn't say anything. <laughs> yeah. Just to hear it. Is is there uh is there which actually on that note, have you always been good with like the nudity? This is something that I talked to Mila about beforehand. And I have this thing and I'll see what you think about it. But are you comfortable with your naked body at all those events? Like, you know, is that natural to you to be that way? I think I've always been somebody who likes to not have their clothes on. <laughs> yeah. Really? But but with that said, like going to the first events or doing the first things, I I, I yeah, I was intimidated. I was nervous because, mm. you know, I don't know. It was new. It was different. Um, I think for me, like once I like I got into burlesque at, at one point like later in life here and and that was really where I started to get super comfortable like more with my body and being like, you know what, there there are beautiful types of bodies of all shapes and sizes. Oh, yeah. and, and it's not something that I didn't know, but like to really live it and to right. like, like embrace that like, and like yeah. and like and like be able to not just say it and feel it for others, but to like. I think there's something different when you're like feeling it for yourself. Yeah. You're like embracing it for your own body. Um, So it it took a little work for me. Um, But these days I'm like, yeah, bears, you dare, whatever. I, you know, I like doing kinky Friday at, the 90s. Oh, fuck or, yeah. I know. have a couple of friends who worked that. That's funny. Ditto. Um, yeah. How about yeah. your husband? Was he good with it? Like, because I think for guys, it's very different. Like, to me, you guys look fucking beautiful. Your bodies Thank are you. beautiful. It's like, it's like nice to see. To me, a guy, you know, certain guys like might be that way, but. We've had, we've had the, the conversation actually has came up on uh, the other podcast that we did for mm-hmm. Couples Next Door. But um, yeah, like there's the whole thing with guys. Like there are some guys that are definitely showers versus growers and they tend to walk around being, um, very showing, you know? So, so that can be intimidating for a guy. And I think the thing is, is like, as women, we know, like, we know, even if your, your business isn't like out there being all big and hard, like we know that like, that doesn't, that's not indicative of anything. Like, like no one's just walking around ready to go. I mean, as women, we're not like, I guess that's a benefit we have is like, you know, it's not like you don't look at us and think like, oh, she's not into me because she's not hard or on alert, you know? Right, right, right. Um, so, yeah, I think for him, it, he was very comfortable just like, you know, stripping down or whatever and like getting to business, um, being stripped down in the setting like that and being naked. Like when you're doing that and not engaged in activities, it's it's a little different. But that doesn't come up at the parties as much like that as it does like. You know, we go to some friends that have like bigger pool parties and whatnot yeah. where you're like just out there naked poolside. And so it comes up more there, I think, than like these kind of hotel takeovers. But because they're like if you're fully nude, you're probably like engaging in some activities that are, you know, yeah, yeah, right. arousing. So great. 
Yeah. Is, is there like, um, well, shit. Uh-huh. Maybe I shouldn't. Have. Well, never mind. Mila, you, you ask a question. I, I want to think about mine. Oh, he's getting uh, shy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm he's trying to think shy. of the approach. Into that. So I guess one of the things that I want to talk about is I feel like, and as I talked to Mila about this beforehand, that I've noticed, because I've done a lot of swinger type podcasts, a lot of sex worker ones, and what I feel like is that you guys have this natural like acceptance of your own body. And also, I feel like... um you see the beauty in other people more easily. Like, like, like you're not, I don't know. Like you'll see mismatches in swinging stuff yeah. where you go like, wow, that couple's way better looking than the couple they're with, but they all seem happy. And I think that's great. You yeah, know what I mean? You know, I, I think too, like the longer you do it or the more you're into it or the more you're committed to, to kind of living this way, you start to see like, there are people you'll see come into it that are kind of a flash in the pan where they're like, here and gone and and the ones that come in and they're just like they want everyone to just look at like look at me and look at how beautiful and perfect i am and Mm -hmm. you know those those people tend to be a lot less fun sexually you know versus people who are super like open and accepting and like i don't know like you want to have a good fucking wild ride get with somebody who's just like comfortable with themselves you know Oh, for sure. And and I think that once you start to embrace that and experience it, you start to see people a little bit differently. Then you you look at the people in the grocery store and you're like, yeah, I, I bet you're a freak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as far as like you know, body positivity and stuff or whatever, um, so many, so many sex workers, especially strippers, you'll see pictures of their before, like when they started stripping, like mm-hmm. first year in versus like fifth year in. And you can see... Like the change and like um, how much more the, it's like a glow up yeah. because a lot of a lot of you know people come and they start out like very insecure with their with their own bodies like especially like the baddest bitch you've ever seen is probably the most insecure woman in the room at the same time and it's just like you know years and years of doing the work or, and like like everybody calling telling you you're beautiful and all this stuff like that definitely helps your self esteem and your and your body. Um, positivity and all that shit. Like, so like, no, I don't think that we're all like naturally like, Oh, I love my body. Like a lot of us had like, e- you know, eating disorders, sure. et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I know I did. So I yep. definitely wasn't, but, but I will say I was always like, I was always like, Oh, like showing my titties though. But I mean, yeah, like, or I I was always like very sexually open, but I definitely always like had body dysmorphia for sure. Until I started stripping and then realizing like, Oh, but don't you think kind of like we're, we all are subject to everything that we're fed from a very young age, like in society, like when you're looking like this, like this is what you're supposed to look like. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or this is what's supposed to be hot. This is what's supposed to be sexy. And now when I look back, I'm like, Oh, no. Oh, right. And so like if you like, don't I'll fit say that everybody, thing. everybody's gorgeous, but I will say it's so crazy that the beauty standard at one point was like literally like a, like a toothpick. A waif. Right. Yeah. I'm like, to me, I like, like, I like my body a lot more <laughs> with weight on it. Like, yes. like I used to be like when I was in high school, obviously I was like 120 pounds, 119. And now I'm like, I'm usually between like 140 and 150. And like, that's where I like to sit. Like, yeah. When, when I was sick, like before I knew I had diabetes, I was like, like 120 and I looked crazy. Like no. women never understand to me, like how much you're so much more beautiful when you are older and have curves and have like character. And it's all like something that comes out like your vibe. But that's you know? not what we're told. Like for years and years sure. from a very young age where you are forming your opinions about yourself, your understanding of the world, when you're told and, and you're seeing again and again in practice that like, this is what is hot. This is what, you know, oh, it's to fucking be. deep. Like, there's so many things. It like, fucks with if your we want to talk about how media is literally just propaganda being fed to you by how society wants you to act, and literally how they want you to show up in society, it literally always starts. It's from from the very beginning. You can probably just look at any fucking movie that you grew up with, and if you went to analyze it right now, 
it would be fucked up because even yeah. to like little boys, like, oh, be macho. And that means never cry. Yeah. Don't feel your feelings. Yes. <sighs> like, and then like, you know, with women, it's like <laughs> me and quiet. Be dainty, dun, 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 dun. Do everything for the male gaze. Da, 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 da. Like even, even watching little Disney, little Disney movies. What is the oh, princess yeah. doing? Oh, oh, fucking Ariel You're wanted to, for him. she wanted legs for a man. Like, yeah. you know, like, yeah. so it's like, yeah, absolutely. It's very ingrained in us. And it's a lot of hard work to unlearn these things, too. So it like, is. you also have to be like a mature, like ready, like grown up to be like, all right, it's time to like unlearn this literally toxic bullshit that I've been force fed my whole life. And then it's so much easier to start to take that on it and accept it for other people and to say like this is you know like to to say it for someone else than it is to when you look at yourself yeah like, like we're oh, so yeah. hard on ourselves absolutely oh yeah i fucking absolutely. hate myself i get it like when you talk about stripping being like a place where you see that glow up or like people start to really embrace empowering their, yeah it's empowering yeah. Mm-hmm. for me yeah burlesque was the same thing and yeah. i think i think anytime you can experience that where you're like wow i am beautiful and sexy and powerful yeah in absolutely. my current state like you you spend so much of your life i think you know growing up in our society feeling like i'll i will be enough when yeah exactly. i will be yeah. pretty enough i will be sexy enough and it's like when, when you're the one like if i could lose standard? more weight if i could get you no. know more fit if I could... literally when i stopped thinking about weight like now I like love my body the most, I guess. I used to just like, oh, that's all I would think about. It's like how many calories am I yeah. taking in? Da, 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 oh, really? Sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For that's sure. For terrible. sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, and literally, like, I just it's very interesting because I literally learned about like bulimia and anorexia from like Degrassi. Like from shows and yep. shit like that. So and huh. like, I don't know, it's just very interesting Did- how you learn some things based off shows meant for kids. But it was supposed yeah. to be like Oh, we're inclusive. Yeah. But I was like, well, I learned so how to do this. <laughs> I like, well, now I know how to, yeah. Now I know how to cut myself when I'm sad. Yeah. Oh. Like, but um, very interesting. Yeah. Propaganda. Bullshit. C, do you feel like, like what uh, Mila got in the strip club or other women do, like, um, has the lifestyle also enhanced yourself, you know, your sense of self? Like, you know, has it made you more confident, do you feel like, or, or not? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, like I said, I think burlesque was kind of like going through classes and then like actually dancing and being part of like doing all of that, like performing was, I think, a place where I started to feel like, hey, there are people that, you know, look a lot of different ways that are really beautiful mm-hmm. and, you know, and and worthy and attractive. And it, like you start to feel like validated in a different way. But with the lifestyle, I think it took it to another level where it was like, Not just, you know, for, for that, like some people, it's like, I feel like, I don't know, like if I were just me and I weren't in the lifestyle, I I don't know that I would know, you know, who thinks I am attractive or sexy, you know, whereas like in this, this arena, I have people who are much younger or older or whatever, you know, all different kinds of people who will say things or, you know, like proposition or flirt or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's very validating to know that like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm good. Like yeah, people see me, you know, they see me, even if you don't hear it, you know, like in this format we do, but you know, I feel like all these communities, like once you like find your like niche or whatever in life, mm-hmm. like, like the, like the sex work community that even smaller than that, like stripper community, escrow community, fucking the swinger community, lifestyle community, even the fucking rave community. Once you're right. in a community, this is when you realize you're like, oh, these people are fucking like really like welcoming and happy and like everything is like so nice. I mean, cause but I, I think have- a lot of that too is like, I mean, don't you think like we all want to be seen? We all want, yeah. we, we all want to be like as ourselves, whatever our, like your authentic self. Like if you want to, you want to know that people can see that and they're like, yeah, that's fucking cool. Or that's hot. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know? So whatever your authentic self is, whatever, maybe you're not as comfortable letting the rest of the world know. That's mm-hmm. why some of these alternative communities become, you know, so, a haven. Yeah, absolutely. Shit. That's what I'm meaning. Like, yeah, like literally like it's always a haven. Like I, sh- any. Go find your community. Dude. I don't know. And it's all much. you want. Yeah. Like everybody just wants to be seen and mm-hmm. appreciated and to feel 
Like they matter. Like they're they Absolutely. that validation and yeah. I usually have to go to a fucking gay bar to get the compliments that I got that night at the couples next door hotel. Oh, literally. Like, for real. I've ne- I haven't had that many women, you know, like that many women say really nice things in a long time. It's just not nor- like you it don't feels walk good around though, with it. it. It feels fucking amazing. Yeah. Are you yeah. and, so it's like, and so it's like, Gabe, so then like, obviously like in these like areas, of course you're going to feel good about yourself because right. that's not something you experience on a normal basis unless well, unless right. you're like a woman going to a gas station. Right, unless you're midnight. you and mm. everybody. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> but, CD gas station. Yeah, yeah. Like, unless it's like, uh, it's fucking not something you want. But and, yeah, so I feel like obviously that would boost anybody's confidence. I mean, on the flip side of it, you also have to be prepared to take some rejection because. Yeah. Well, I was going to say. Yeah, earlier, not everybody's going like, to be into you. You're not going to be into everybody, yeah. you know. But I was going to say, like, I mean, I feel like. There's going to be always that handful of fucking haters, fucking assholes, entitled ass little bitches. But I feel like the good, like, always outweighs that. Oh, At yeah. least in my experience. Over, overwhelmingly. Say. There was one time yeah. where I actually felt myself get a little territorial. Because there was, like, <laughs> when you got really drunk at the end. Oh, yeah. Over, overall, everyone was so respectful that it blew me away. Like, yeah, truly, yeah. where I was, like, yeah. it felt very safe and all that. And then right at the end, when you got a little swishy... There's a couple guys who tried to take you to the balcony and they like grabbed your arms where, where it's like it makes oh, yeah. you like step forward. the whole forward. time all I wanted to do is smoke a vape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, a vape. But I thought it'd be that the whole time and it wasn't no. at all. Not at yeah. all. So I thought that was no. great actually. What um, have you guys had? So C, have you guys been to a lot of different ho- like hotel takeover type events? For, yeah. Like- I mean we- – we're actually on several sites. So, okay. I mean, we've been to um, takeovers for a few different sites and um, and then, you know, house parties, pool parties, you know, different. So different so we're things here things to like kind of like review couple next doors yeah. event as well. And we want you to be honest, obviously. So, don't yeah. you know, but um, I have my opinions about it, but I'd love to hear yours since you've been to, I'm sure, much more. Yeah. I mean, what, seriously, like in terms of like uh you know, a takeover event like that. I've, we've just, we've really enjoyed theirs like that. That was fun. It's such and, a great place yeah. to be like, and really like consent is really a big deal, you know, and lots of good looking people. Yeah, yes. A lot of good looking people. I will say fantastic. Sometimes I have not been so lucky and having the full <laughs> hotel takeover like that. I mean, I love like, you know, we did the room crawl and all that. I mean, it's it's just fun and it's so social. Yeah. So social. There was a girl like naked in the hallway and I was like, yes. I was like. Yeah. I think there's, I don't know. People are just really cool. And it's it's such a social thing and you get to meet so many people and it's not just like loud club music. Like you can, you can go no, dance your ass off. You can go like, you know, have a private conversation, hit the hot tub, whatever you want to do. You can go watch people have sex. You can in watch room. people have sex. You can go to the after party. I love watching people have Me sex. Too. We were, we were watching, we were watching, we were watching a giant down. bed full of like, how many people was on that bed? I mean, five or six. There was, at yeah. One time. Yeah. But there was a skinny white man with like yeah. a huge wiener. And I was just watching him, like, he was, like, getting ahead, and then, so I don't know what remember, he was doing, but I remember being, watch. like, I was standing next to you, Gabe, right? We were, like, look at this guy. Oh, yeah, we were, like, talking <laughs> like it's an athletic event. Yeah, like, we just, were, like, like no, we, we're literally, like, <laughs> we were, we're well, so completely. stupid. I mean, it was awesome. I fucking loved it. We were probably it. yelling and thought we were whispering. And that's, I mean, that, you guys were there for that. That was, what, yeah. and yes, we say that's, like, you know, the Super Bowl first wingers or whatever, but, yeah. but, I mean, you know, Mardi Gras is another giant one and there are so many things in between so like that that party that you were at i would say that's not unique right right right. i mean that that's that i've i did you know halloween last year i think i even played more and had more (laughs) like i don't know like it's it's different every year you know but like it's it's just they need to do it they need to do a hito week because you can literally get like that catamaran that's where i got drill doed Oh, I squirted yeah. into the ocean. Hey, and if you That's are, awesome. if you manufacture a drill dough, <laughs> please send it to Other Words for Horror, and we'll review your product on stage. Right? No, seriously, a drill dough, dude. How about a drill? Dough? <laughs> Fucking Greg, and he got new pieces too, and one of the pieces is humongous. And I'm like, you're not drill doughing this giant wiener into my cooter right now. In front of all these people. And then so I made him get the smaller one. Did. Oh, and okay. then I let him do it. Because the big one is it just, just like, wasn't that one. It doesn't need to. Because <laughs> when I'm telling when I'm telling you, this shit is like. 
I don't know if we need to start off with the fucking. I swear I they lied to you. With a real human. And I'm not a size queen. I just like mm. to be fucking stretched sometimes. <laughs> it's the fullness factor. Okay. Yeah. Right? Like, you know. But I can take any dick. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's <laughs> I'm just challenge so much, accepted. Yeah. Oh, right. I'll be right That's in there. That's why you have three holes. Mm hmm. That damn right. Is there. You're tight. <laughs> so you said you're on many sites. Yeah. What do you think? Because. I've been to one other hotel takeover and a couple other events. The other hotel takeover that I went to, what I'll say is I heard. That one was at the Hyatt, right? Yep. Yep. And and it was awesome. I fucking loved it. It was what I, I would consider it a little bit higher, higher end, like as far as the buy-in and mm-hmm. all that stuff and their whatever stuff going on. But the people were not nearly as open and friendly and even attractive I like. I hate to say that. No, I get. I get what you're saying, and yeah, and there's there's different people on different sites and different yeah different events. Um, I will say, hands down, the the C and D events are the ones that I feel are like our home space. Like that's our that's our vibe. Um, but yeah, I mean, but there's other fun things to do. Wait, is everybody's different? Oh, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. What is different about it to you? Like, I mean, what do they do different? Um. I mean, I think they've been at it a long ass time. And so they've kind of perfected a few things, you know, in terms of like how the weekend plays out. I think the communication on like getting rooms and, you know, when things are going on and, you know, what, you know, where to go for what and just what to expect. I think it just goes so smoothly. Um, The people on the site, I think the site itself it's it's like Facebook for swingers. Oh my god, so fun. It's... Gabe, did you make us a thing? I did. Yes. Well, can I need the lot? I need yeah, the Yeah, 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 I will. I'm I'll trying to it. chat with people. Yeah, okay, so when yeah, you're no when you're sure. on there, it's like I mean, you hop on there and it's like people posting their pics and videos fun. and like I don't know, and you get to see people and chat and you I mean, it feels it's more like, like I a just, community. I just learned that LinkedIn is Facebook for work. Yes. I had no clue, dude. Yeah, well, if, <laughs> if people fucked on there, you'd know. Um, I was like, what? Anyway, so that's funny. They don't yeah, they don't really cater to the the sex work part of it, unfortunately. Oh no, no, they hate us. They're they're not they're not with the times. And by the way, I want to But I do know hella escorts worth Langdon, so fuck you, Langdon. Yeah, right. Suck a dick, we're still there, bitch. Suck a dick. Anyway, sorry. (laughs) And then also we should shout out that couples next door is black owned, which is Oh my god. When I saw that the owner was like this tall black man, I was like Okay, now we're talking. And he he is awesome. Respect. And great, the professor. I love like yeah, the professor. Is yeah, he goes by the awesome. professor. Um, Are we allowed to say that? Yeah. Here, yep. yeah. Isn't that a good ass fucking like sex name? Mm-hmm. Yes. And his wife too. She's awesome. She was like a little baddie, little yes. little uh, little little, th- little thick white thing, right? Yeah. Yep. Hell yeah. The yep. black snow. The black snow. Fuck. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's just the whole thing, man. I Very thought was outfit. so great, and um, they have. I mean, they have. Party, they'll, they'll do pool parties at their house in the summer. Dude, I want to go to this fucking house I, pool party. Now. I was just talking to them Mila, about so doing another fun. one. That would be so cool. I already told them we're in. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm. I'd be good MC. Oh fuck yeah! All right, now everybody put in their butt pucks. <laughs> oh, the, even the fact that there was like a dress up. Like I don't dance and I don't do fucking costume parties. I did both of those things and had a fucking blast. Exactly. You were, bo- you were boring and now you're fine. Yep. No, for real. Anybody who doesn't fucking do costume parties, you're boring. Yeah, Dress probably. up with your wife. Get out dude. of your comfort zone. Or your Try fucking husband. Something. But yeah. like, you know, people who don't dress up for Halloween, what are you trying to prove? You know I what I just want to know. Yeah, because to me, the way I looked at it is like, I do stand up. I'm like already showing off. I don't need to, like, this isn't my bit. I don't know. All I, I, I had know a thing is like the that. only thing you're proving is that you're born. I know. So. No, you're right. You're I'm, not wrong. No, I'm not. I'm making my man dress up. You're putting yeah. this on. It was Shout fun out as fuck. to my ex boyfriend who showed up to my club one time dressed as a cockroach. Oh, wow. 
Jay Hernandez, such a fun guy. Oh, I can say his Jay. name because yeah. that's like a thirty million people's names. So yeah, we're good. <laughs> it's one of many. Yeah, it's so common. So can we bring up um, the thing about your family? I know we're kind of getting long in the tooth. Left we'll to wrap up, but I hate sure. to miss this because it's one of <laughs> oh, the funniest, yeah. most interesting. Yeah, I mean, things. we can only go for so long because eventually these neutrals there. are coming through. And oh, I know. I'm like, I'm done. And I'm like, this I one. pee, man. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, and we can okay, wrap yes, up quick. No, let's, let's wrap it up. We can talk about it. Now we both have, I've literally been like this. No, I'm like squirming a little bit. We'll see. Yeah, we Neela, you're put, the one We need to put circles so. in these chairs. Yeah. A little porta potty underneath. I'm actually surprised. With like a a but then we would never stop. We would just talk all night. I know, right? For you know, real. yeah, yeah. And okay, okay. Me so was an open door peer too. The familial. So. I do, I do. Story. I'm too lazy to close. I'm not gonna close the door. No, I know. You, you just surprised. Okay, so me what happened? Time. Okay, something about family and the swinger. Fest. Yeah. So I mean, this came up at the at the party when we were talking about some things. That, um. So yeah. So you know, we got together. Like I said, young. I was 19 when I was pregnant with our first, and. Um, we've, we have really worked at raising our kids sex positive and yeah. open-minded. We've tried to, you know, That's really nice. infuse in them, like all of the good things that we can try to infuse in them. But, you know, you just, you never know, whatever, like, you know, things are, are what they are. They're their own people. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, there was, um, an evening where my husband is, you know, mine and his business on the CND website. And there's a thing on there where you can where you can look at like you can see who has viewed your profile recently. Yeah. So he goes to click on that and he sees he's like, what? Who's this? And he looks and there is a picture of our daughter and lot of be on there. Unbelievable. Holy fuck. What are the chances? What did but, he but say? So, so, so looking so at that, like they saw, saw looked at our site. So they're like has their own fiance. their own profile, obviously, yeah. and had looked at ours. So we're like, okay, A, we're outed. B, uh, right. what are they doing? You know? So um, he I called mean. me. I was out for a work dinner and it was just like, okay, we got to talk about this. Did he I'm call like, oh you in God, like a I'm panic? Like, no, I mean, he I'd waited like, until I was like driving home and he's like, well, maybe I should wait till you get here. I'm like, well, now you can't wait. Just tell me what, what what's going on. So he tells me, I'm like, okay. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just, I'm going to talk to him when I get home. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And how old are your kids? And then also, like, can you tell us what's on that page? Just to give the audience an idea of what your Yeah, I mean, so a typical saw. profile, like, we've got face pics and whatnot there that are just, like, right, but it's vanilla just like, face pics. Like a- but there are, like, there's, like, some dirty shit. And, like, I mean, I think <laughs> right on our, like, background of our profile at that point, there was one where it was, like, some shabari shit with my ass out and you know <laughs> like there's shabari is but I'm... ropes like I was okay. tied up yeah, like ropes yeah yeah so how did i know that it must be in my brain there you go yeah. somewhere deep down it's, it's in there space so i mean there there are some there are some pictures on there you don't want your kids to be looking at that's right. weird did... right and um and and they did not like sit and inspect our profile but they no. did find us. And um, why though? It must have been the algorithm. Like you popped up or they yeah. literally like looked you up there. Saw probably, something. Like, and then know. disbelief yeah. of yeah. like, this like, can't no be way. my parents. Right. Right. My mom's like, what is this? Whore. Wait. Well, and I don't, I think, I think it wasn't even our son that had clicked. I think it was her. Right. Yeah. And she had always suspected, like she'd asked. She might have actually oh. looked She it. asked point blank at one point. Women. And I was like, no, what are you talking? That's crazy. You're silly. She asked you? She asked. Oh, yeah. She liked you up. For it was sure. like a, it was like a do? buzzed up night at a bonfire. No, and, because no, she's way too fun and cool of a mom. Uh, right. No, I, I can would see be that. Like, I'd be like, they're into some freaky shit, dude. I'd be talking to your son and I'd be like, your fucking parents yeah. are swingers. Yep. <laughs> right. be like, well, like, that's no, and that's no. the conversation <laughs> afterwards that happened with our home. daughter. <laughs> so, so first it was our son. And so she like our son and our his fiance. Mm-hmm. And so I I had to talk to him anyway. I got home that night. I called him. We talked about whatever bullshit we had to talk about. And then it was like, OK, there's something else we need to talk about. He's like, yeah, there is. Oh. Um, and, and it was like, okay, just tear the bandaid off. It's yeah, fine. It. And we talked it through and it was like, look, you know, what are you guys looking for? What are we, you know, like, so yeah. let's, let's try to find a way that we can both have our paths. And, and we are kind of looking for different things and it was fine. Yeah. Um, they were actually at the Halloween party at that. They were at that takeover event. <laughs> and you guys were too. Yep. But like separate. Yeah, I mean, we weren't. You, in... Did you see them? I mean, oh yeah, no, we yeah we saw them. I, I introduced mean... them to some friends, some different people, and um, it was so all good. Um, and they have partners in the lifestyle that are 
you know, that were there as well. This is um, generational. I love that. Right. Yes, I mean, it, we're not like oh, yeah. going into the same room of no. play together. It's not like anything freaky like that, but that um, might be weird. I mean, this respect. <laughs> yeah. It's I mean, no disrespect to hope. whatever, you know, but sense. like, um, no, no that's not, that's not our, for me. To the incest folks. But, um, <laughs> right. You, well, okay. No, it's I mean, so that, funny to me that you said that. <laughs> no but yes um but yeah so i know it was it was all good no and actually like as you're talking about that the i think the funnier story was after that all kind of came out i'm like Mm -hmm. okay well he was like the last one i was thinking we would talk to about this stuff and then our daughter who is 23 Mm -hmm. um we were like i'm like you know what we talk about everything like i know when she gave her first hand job i know things a mom doesn't need to know like we have been very open and she's she's bisexual she knows that i am she knows a little bit about some of my experiences but not fully talked about us being open yeah so after this happened i'm like you know what this is not right i gotta talk to her i I just i just gotta let her know i gotta talk to her and we had a uh, wedding shower that was like way up north and we had a road trip we had to take for it. So I'm like, this now is time to talk. This is when it's going to happen. <laughs> and we're, we're driving. And I'm like, okay, there's something I want to talk <laughs> to you about. And I kind of get it out there and she's quiet. And I'm like, what? And my, I'm driving. She's like in the passenger seat. I'm like, what? And I look at her and she's kind of got the purse lip thing going on. I'm like, would you say something? She's like, okay, don't get mad. Like, what do you mean don't get mad? Like, don't tell me don't get mad. Yeah, like, what are you, no, okay, now, mad now I'm getting mad. Anxiety, now I'm going to get mad. I'm like, what do you, what, don't get mad. And yeah, she's like, okay, wait, 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 wait. She's like, just, do you remember, like, when I left for college and I asked you to use your Audible? Like, I don't have no idea where this is fucking going. And she's like, yeah, so you gave me your login for your Audible. And this was like two years ago. Oh, you must have had some books. <laughs> So she's like, yeah, well, I never really, I used it for what I said, but then I actually kept your login information because you got some really good books on there. So I was just listening to shit like the past couple of years. And she's like, you know, I saw you had like, you know, more than two uh, ethical sluts. I was going to say, did you like, have ethical sluts? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, we've got some kind of you, Dolly. ringing. Oh, sorry. That's um, all right. It's literally my diet telling me. You need me to run in a candy oh. bar? No, 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 okay. no. This is just what it does when it's expired. <laughs> it's the most obnoxious. I actually have a TikTok of me smashing it with a, a hammer because it's so obnoxious. It is loud. Is that crazy? It's loud. Nobody yes. needs all that. <laughs> I'm not dead. Anyways, sorry. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> she was like, yeah, so I, I, I had been looking. You had all these books on there. And so she went to her friend, her bestie, who's like, we've known her as well since they were just kids and she's like oh my god check this out and she's like look at these books my mom has and she looks at it and she's like you know that kind of checks like your parents are probably swingers checks, dude. <laughs> and i'm i'm looking at her i'm like are you kidding me so like for what like the past two years and I, i'm like why didn't you say anything she to me friends, like confirmed i'm like are you <laughs> kidding me why didn't you say something and she just she like totally turned it around like she was the mom and she's like well you know, I, I figured you would let me, you would talk to me when you were ready. Oh my God. When you were ready. Yeah. You, you would share it. when you were ready. As long as you're being She's like, safe. I'm not going to push you to speak. If that's your business, you know, if that's what you and dad are doing, that's, that's okay She's with like, me. She's like, I accept As you. long as you're safe. Oh and, you know. As long dad as you're on board with this. Yeah. getting tested regularly. Yeah. Uh, you just, you, you guys are getting tested. You're some protection, right, mom? I love that. I love that. No. I mean, so like. Hashtag we don't, good parenting. Uh, no, I, I will say that, like people, people want to focus on like how weird it is, but honestly, like I, I feel like it's a flex. You created like a good ass. We got well rounded some child. strong secure. humans that are super yeah. secure in their sexuality, super open minded, not judgmental. You know, these things are fucking. They're they're leaps and bounds yeah, ahead of where we were right. at their age. I'm like, you know, people got to go through a whole ass seven years of therapy to get no there. i feel like it's a huge so. it's it's less weird and more of a huge flex as parents big ass flex you know well, how about this yeah. like, it is weird but it's also fucking awesome okay, and it's the best thing like i mean i don't think it's weird i think it's only weird oh, based on weird. society standards yeah i know which i'm i'm just which, giving shit if you but, think about it society standards are what's weird or stupid no for right. sure yeah, but i and i think what is normal with my daughter's virginity that's normal weird. was it mm. was it harder <laughs> to have the daughter-in-law know or the son um, or your daughter, I guess. Like, was it a little more awkward with one of the kids than the others for you? Um, our son, I would say probably the most. Is he more like buttoned up as it? As yeah, a I mean, we don't. 
like we talk a lot, but he's never been super open and talking about <laughs> it's funny. Like I remember <laughs> I just had a flashback to like when he was going through sex ed in middle school and uh, I told him back then I was like, you know, if you have any questions about anything, I don't care what it is. Like, just ask me. I'm never yeah. going to make you feel stupid. If you want to know what something is, I if I don't know, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to help you out. That's what Dirty Sanchez. So, that's no, what I well, asked my dad. No, so what he <laughs> asked. Somebody called me in on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty Sanchez. I'm sorry. That's so fucking you. It just reminded me. Like, <laughs> you can't see me, but I got the dad, mustache I finger. I was <laughs> like, Dad, what's the Dirty Sanchez? And you said, where, where did you hear that? Why did you? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, a kid called me in on the bus. <laughs> Rude. I'm sorry. Fucking hilarious. Fuck little Rude. Games, dude. They're so mean and ruthless. Kids anyway. are awful. Um, oh yeah. No, I don't know. Like with him, but I told him like you can ask anything, you know. And then I went to pick him up from school one day and have his little sister in the car. And he's just, I mean, this is like the first time he's taken sex. I it probably was like fourth grade or some shit. And he's like, okay. He's like, so somebody said today something, and I'm just wondering like what it means. Man, and, what, do you remember what it was? Yes. He asked what a wet dream is. Oh, I guess sweetie. So. And I was like, okay, here's my chance. Here's my chance to like be like keep it together and like give him the right answers, right? And I'm like, okay, so you know, and I start to explain, and like the more I'm explaining, the more I see him shrinking. He's oh, God. And he's like, oh my God, shut fucking up, shut up, he's shut like, up. Why did I ask this? And he's like, he oh, never so this happens to me every me. night. Yeah. He, and then he <laughs> stopped asking. So I'm like, okay, well, this is not gonna work. So no, then we got him this book, and it was like a just throw it at him. It was a book Read like, this. yeah, well, I mean, he, he was a reader anyway, but it was like a book written by a doctor and it was like, it was like four, ki- and it was like, it was right four now. kids going through, you know, puberty and mm-hmm. like about sexuality. And the one that we chose was like super open where it talked about like anal sex, gay sex, like yeah. all kinds of different sexuality. And like this, That's good. this is you raw. Shouting good. out the title? Um, you know if I could is? remember it, I'd okay. have to do a little dig, but like, what, we'll, but, we'll, I'll find it. It, yeah, it yeah. won't be too hard to find, but like. When we looked at it, we're like, okay, this, because none of it was like saying right, wrong. It was just, this just is like, yeah. and it was, was kind of clinical. I bet it's one of those books that they just banned in Texas. Probably. Because they said it was pornographic when it was literally just like, right, it facts. was basically teaching Burn kids the science, how to like, it was know? like, yeah, like, this is what happens. Like, if you're like tugging on a dick and stuff's coming out, like. Yeah, maybe you might you might be. But that I mean that job that was it for him. Like yeah. he got to sit there and look at that and reread whatever he like needed to, Good, and that was yeah. it. And then with our daughter, we're like we looked for we went and did kind of the same thing, but yeah. there was like a, another version that was like you know more geared toward young women. Her style, yeah, yeah, and. She actually, at that point, then, like, people all had Kindles or whatever. And so she actually had it on her Kindle. And I remember um, she got in trouble one day because she had a, she was in private school. Oh, and, boy. Um, she had a, it was, like, after school. And we, we aren't even, like, religious people. It was just, like, I don't know. We'd had some. It, 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 that's a whole other story. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but she was, like, after school. And it was, like, play practice or something. And, like, she had other girls kind of surrounding her because they all had questions. And they wanted to know shit that yeah. nobody was telling yeah. them. Yeah. And she had like this Dropping fucking the ball, like encyclopedia exactly. of sex and of sexuality. Truth. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> it's so important for, for young people to learn about what sexuality is and to learn about what it is to be aroused. Because if you don't know these things, it also makes you a lot more vulnerable to getting sexually assaulted. Absolutely. If you don't know what it, what, a, what a man looks like when he's aroused or a fucking your babysitter a woman looks like when she's aroused or like what it's like how you how you're being touched or stuff like that like all of this is like such good information it's so crazy to me that people were like this is pornography it's and it's, i wanted yeah. them to understand their own bodies yeah absolutely and the like, people so... you know in their lives like i wanted them to feel adjusted yeah. you know and like not have it be such a big question mark that they had to go seek it out from other sources that might not give them good information. Right, exactly. You know? Like, you're not supposed to, like, I'm... shelter them. Sheltered kids turn out real fucked. They do. Oh, God. So, like, you guys... You, you like... think those of us who, like, had rough childhoods, hello, you know, are fucked up. No, I'm a very high-functioning adult, yeah. you know, versus, like, there are people who are very sheltered that are struggling, yeah. like, well, you believe, you and, know? And, like, you think that, you, you know, you send your daughter to an all-Catholic school, you think she's not getting fucked in the ass now because... <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, but, like, that's not saving them. 
Like, no. You have to fucking give, like, education or people will No, if anything, the more you repress, the more there is... Because now yeah, you've made now, it taboo. Now, now you've rebel. made it that cookie on the, the shelf. Oh, and... there's, there was this... Uh, oh, piss me off. There's this viral video of this dad cutting his daughter's braids off. And, like, you know, like, black women and their ha- yeah. and hair. And, like, he, he was cutting them off. And... um. It was for her twerking at a party, which I'm guessing uh, uh, there was a video that he found. And instead of giving her like education and helping her, to be like, he why, her would, off. why would that not be a good thing? Yeah, to do? and I'm like, watch, or watch her rebel and and go suck the whole yep, basketball right. team's dick. That's coming. Because let me you tell thought you, she was twerking when right. you saw her. Guess, <laughs> guess who else's dad cut the hair off when they were little? Oh no! And y'all know what I do for money, so let's. <laughs> Let's not do that. Yeah, I but, but you're like a I, good person. Because I'm not you trying to yeah, say yeah. that if it went any other way, I wouldn't have become a stripper or whatever. But I am saying that didn't fucking stop me. No. At all. So. No. You, but, try, to, you try to lay the law down like that. Don't fucking embarrass your that's kids. That's not. Like, no. Or or to make them, them. Like like instilling that shame. You know? Right. And you that's never so want. That's so fucked up. Like, people. When people have shame around sex, it's never good. It's not it's healthy for them or anyone else it's real that they're up. in relationships with. Real yeah. Is, is there, so just as a parenting tip then, I'm just asking you. So which which I want to applaud what you guys. This lady. I know. What's that? She's oh, my grooving. twerker. She was twerking or whatever. Was she? Of. Not really. What's that? But, yeah. but, but whatever. I was going to say, because I want to point out how, because I was very... In the very, very beginning, I would have to admit I was probably judgmental about swinger culture or whatever. Or mm-hmm. just, you know, I didn't believe that both people were really into it. I always thought one guy was more like I just viewed it as more toxic. Not I don't know. I don't know what it was, but you guys are a great example of what I've seen over and over and over again, which is like That's real. really, really mm-hmm. well adjusted, really emotionally intelligent successful and then now you're obviously a good parent too because you're it just to me everything is how do i keep it where my daughter will talk to me all the time right and, and yeah. to, to have that open line of of communication I is mean, so huge for us i mean and for my daughter like that especially with her i think it started way before we were doing anything in the lifestyle or anything like that yeah um for her i mean it was early on and then and then really like during those middle school years and then into high school, it was just like making it like super normal and okay to ask questions and to talk about stuff, giving her access to tools to like understand things. Yeah. Um, to make it, I mean, it's, it's hard that you can't wait until they're like 17 and then be like, you know, let's have a right. conversation about sex, you know? No. Yeah. Like I said, the first time I had an orgasm, I was 12. They already oh. know. Yeah. I know. Pe- and also you have to think about it. Little boys were smacking our asses at 11. Yeah. Like, <laughs> without, like, consent right. or anything. And I, and also, I do, obviously, it was a, a different time. So, so like, now. When I was like, probably again, about, like, I don't know, 10 yeah. to 12 years of age, and I remember, like, like, grinding with another yeah. neighbor girl. Oh, YMCA dances. Y'all know who got them shut down. My generation. You yeah. know why? Yeah. Because we were children bumping and grounding and yep. sucking wieners in the bathroom, okay? Sucking wieners. We when were they actually were kids, wieners. Yeah. Nobody, Back then, nobody they were really wieners. They were wieners. Shit. Yeah, they so, were winners, little babies. Well, hey, well, actually, let me ask you this because this but involves I'm you at, then, and I'm and like, like this will be go. the last thing. Okay, okay. all right, last thing. This will what be is quick. This a seven hour podcast. Truly, truly, <laughs> is an honest question. So remember, I told you, Mila, that my daughter is like really into women who wear dresses, and like she's just into like girly, yeah, girly she's shit. A, yeah. She's a full on femme. Yes, and she asked. So like she asked me if I have any friends who wear dresses because she wants she just loves to look at them and see them she's five right okay so i showed I, i'm like i you know i don't know and, and Mila's one of the first ones that popped up so i pull up her facebook and my daughter's like oh my god she just loves Mila's dresses and her hair and her wigs and all this shit little, and, little girls love me oh yeah yeah big like time it's all the princess. Like, princess you know yeah. the hair and the lashes They're like that's and... what i want to be when i grow up like, oh, oh yeah and i'm like go tell your dad no she was like <laughs> there and and i truly there was a moment where she asked like it wasn't about what you do or something but it was no. something where she asked where i felt like a point where i could have been honest about what a like, lot of people just say like ballerina or 
Well, yeah, and and that's I just said dancer, yeah. you know. I just said, and it's fine. And I there's think no you, I mean, need. you do have to edit. But I'm when not, do you say yeah. that? You, I, you know, well, what age? Not, when they're five? Honest. No, I know, like, oh, I know. Not she five. takes off her clothes and uh, that, they, because they don't know what to do with that. That doesn't no. make sense. And I know, know? that. So I right be now, clear. That's, that's, a good, <laughs> that's a good question, though. I, I yeah. don't know. I think that even teenagers are extremely impressionable, but at the same time. They have so much access. Oh to God! Internet at that now. point, I wouldn't like. Maybe if we're in that. the seventies, we're like no internet. No, but like, do you nowadays, think at age ten, you yeah. tell the truth there? I think at age ten, you. I think I depending on the kid, it depends okay. on yeah. the kid. I suppose how far along you are. Like what? How For mature sure by are high they? School. By high school, if they're like, "Mom, are you a stripper?" Yeah, because I yeah. found these heels in this bag of cash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Or I like, mean, they're not dumb. Like they'll find your Instagram. Like they're smarter with technology than we are at this point. By Think far. about the shows they watch. Yeah, like, like what's accessible to them right exactly. now. Exactly. The they're it's, watching it's, P Valley and Showtime when we're sleeping. Yeah, because I know what I was watching when my yeah. parents were sleeping. Fuck. Did you watch on Euphoria? HBO after dark? Like any of that? Emmanuel. Like I mean, the things that they see. You know, they're not. They're I not blind. Them. They know. Yeah. Oh, it's like, but yeah, they they know shit. Fucking, you know. You know what? Rest in peace. Fest. You're not. You're not so sad, dude. You're not you're not keeping anything from them. You're not protecting them. Right. Because they're getting it everywhere else, whether you want them to or not. Yeah. So the no, best no thing question. you can do is like, as you know, they're being more and more exposed is to be honest and like give like like the good real real. Yeah, you know? the real real before yeah. they fucking learn the hard way. Right. Yes. Which it's not good, you guys. So I mean for us, it was like middle school. Yeah. Is when okay. we started really talking about that stuff. Like, little girls were getting trained. Okay. Right. Okay? So, I just feel like no, they, did, they probably feel, didn't too. get the talk. You know? They no. probably didn't have supportive parents. And, I mean, for what it's worth, so, our daughter, we, we talked about that, you know, it was like middle school, all through middle school, yeah. like, talking about before she even had her period, we were also, talking nothing, about the stuff, you know? Trains. Right. Yeah, but, just, and, you know, but, the but like, when you're, when you're that young, like, maybe you gotta think about yeah, it Yeah, these bit, men you know? were doing, they're being predators. <laughs> um, good people, like, but, have you know, but, sex. but even having those discussions that young, she wasn't, like, like, out there being a slut or something, you know, yeah, not yeah, that there's right. anything wrong with being a slut either, but, like, right, right. she wasn't, like, like, people who keep that information or you try to hoard that knowledge when they're young, a lot of times you think you're protecting them. But you're not. No. No. You're, I what mean, you're doing I, is like actually harming them in the long no. run. No. And you, you got to think of it differently. Flip flip the script. You're empowering them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give them that information. Empower them to make good choices about their, like, we, I started early on with our kids. Like, we talked about, like, vir- losing your virginity or doing mm-hmm. anything. It's like, you know what? You're going to hear this from, you know, family or from TV or from friends or from wherever. You're going to hear different things all over the place. Yeah. At the end of the day. When you decide to do something, it's your body and you're going to do it. You just you just got to be prepared for any consequences. So mm-hmm. let's talk about what that looks like. Because these are adult These are These are real consequences. Mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to scare you. I just want you to be really prepared for like these are the things. Yeah. So it's it's not about like protecting them by, by keeping them shielded. By scaring them and shielding them. No, it's empowering them with knowledge that helps them make really good choices for themselves. And that helps them to become their own people sooner too, yeah, where they, they good. where they feel really like independent and, you know, in control of their own, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Road. Well, we Such should close mom. just with um, like our final kind of thumbs up, thumbs down on couples next door uh, hotel takeover, since that's what we we're reviewing. Two and if raging we... thumbs up from me. Yes. <laughs> raging. raging hard thumbs. Or can I like. Mila, same for you. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I give it, I give it, I give it hella thumbs up, um, because it was also like I think that that bed of people we were watching mm-hmm. were like twenty, like in their twenties. It almost annoyed so me. They were so I didn't young. realize that it was gonna be like There's literally. A huge I did not realize that there were people in their twenties, like it in like the the swap world or the what's it called swinger world. In the swinger, I didn't realize. We're, I mean, yeah, like, I know yeah. we're like about I would say to wrap. At least Twenty-five, but but I will say that like younger generations now, it is so much more common for them to just be open in general. Like, I love that for them. Sexuality yes. is way more open. Yeah. You know, your choices like that are just yeah. a lot easier. So that's what I like. I liked that there was. was like hella variety, and everybody was like great mm-hmm. and having a good time. I- yeah, I even liked how, like, the younger girl, and by younger, I mean 25, whatever they were, but it's right, like. Right, I, oh, they're, to they're, us, they're, they're little they are. children. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I they are, fucked, yeah. Like, that white dude, no. that little white boy, I wouldn't have fucked him. I wouldn't have fucked those girls either. Because he was too either. young to me, but, but you know, I Fun was to like, watch. nice dick. 
Remember the 55 year old guy who stormed the bed? And I truly was like watching him come to the bed. It's four 25 year olds. And I remember just going like, no, 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 you're going to get in huge trouble. And to my, <laughs> to my shock, the girls just sat up and started sucking his dick. There you like, go. Hell yeah. And I pointed at him and I said, you give me hope. <laughs> and oh for God. real, I did It's that. all fucking yeah. consent, man. Just yeah. Consent. Absolutely. Oh. Oh, well, what an awesome conversation today, so by the way. Thank this was you. fun. Thank you guys for having me on. This was awesome. I'm really glad that I came here tonight. Do you have yeah, anything yeah, that you want so to promote? We're so happy to have you. Yeah, do you? Do you have anything you want to promote? Yeah, I mean, if I can. It's, yeah, not, it's not even mine, but it's a near and dear. So Second, we love near and dear. My, yeah. my bestie is a producer for Burlesque. Um, oh. She produces the Golden Garters um, show, which is at the Amsterdam. And they have a show coming up here the second week of December. Oh, my God. The second weekend on Saturday. And they do a really unique thing where they, like, actually the girls and – they and them and guys and I should I say girls but it's not it's all whoever they dance <laughs> <laughs> the 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 dancers dance to a live jazz band they have the South Side Aces that play um, which is a great local jazz band oh my that's God. Fucking so they play awesome. live jazz music it's very like throw it back to the what is it you know, called that's like real Golden burlesque, Garters burlesque, burlesque, burlesque but it's at the Amsterdam Golden and Garters burlesque yeah at, at the Amsterdam Amsterdam and St Paul and you can find it on Ooh. Facebook they have a Facebook page I know the Amsterdam. we'll put it in the in the uh, I'll, I'll yeah. put the link in the uh, yeah. description absolutely. Yeah, Miranda Wright is um, one of the three producers. It's Miranda Wright, Sparkles Du Jour, and Petty Treason. And they're all amazing, amazing forces and beautiful humans. And they produce a bad show. It's a Saturday night. It's the second Saturday in December. But they... They have they have them going regularly. And they do different themes, different things going on. Um, But yeah, it's always a lot of fun. Always a great show. So... I'll yeah. plug that. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, Mila? And then um, all I got to plug is the Stripper Awards Ceremony that mm. we are holding November 29th at 7 p.m. on a Wednesday. Um, the Everything is posted and listed on my Other Words for Horror Instagram page. So go there and find all the info. But, yeah, it starts at 7 p.m. Um, the address is there. And also I'll place the link in the description as well and totally nominees to yes you're totally welcome <laughs> yes to um and the uh nominees are open for the second round of categories right now and the um voting for the second round of categories starts on november 19th so make sure you get your nominees in because the most nominated is who makes it to the voting round and we're only doing Four nominees per category. So you better share it and you better get your nominees up. Because I don't want to hear the, no lip. Yeah, what are some of the categories? And just to run through, because Mia's um, putting this fattest, together. She's fattest, involved. nicest ass, um, best titties, MVP, um, OG. It's going to be so dope. Um, yeah. So those are a couple. To Love it. To name a few. Yeah. And we're trying to rep- you know, we, we want all the strippers from all... All the clubs in Minneapolis, and it's put on by strippers. So and not any be... club affiliated, just me and my bitches. By swap. So it's for, yeah, it's a gala for swap and for the guild, which we'll be explaining Love at it. the gala. So bring your ass. Good bring cause. your regular. Yeah. Fucking if you support us, come. Because like I said, it's Throw like a gala. The, yeah. yeah, so come auction. donate. Everything's <laughs> basically a donation. We have silent auction. We have... Baskets from Sex World, Notoriously Fitted, Venus, um, lots of lots places. Of cool um, a pole studio also put together a package for us for and, a discounted um, pole learning session. So, yeah. And we're going to be live streaming and interviewing live people streaming. from that the whole yeah, time. So little, it's going to be great. Little mini interviews. Like the, like the Grammys or something. Yeah. Yes. Photographers. <laughs> we have a bar. We have... Just everything God, this your guy sweet again. little hearts could ask for. It's going to be such a cool party. I, I bring think that it's fucking, fucking ass. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. And make your make your regulars bid to be your date. Boom. That is what they should do. All right. Are we going to go? I got to pee my pants. Yep. Ditto. Bye, Bye everyone. Over Thank, the bathroom. You. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. I'm like, I will. Ah. I know. I, I, was, I was squirming a while ago. I know it was M B C no relation to NBC.